The moon casts an eerie glow over an abandoned hospital. Inside, shadows dance ominously as the wind howls through broken windows. Jason, late 20s, brave but nervous, enters the hospital, wearing his security guard uniform. He clutches a flashlight tightly, scanning the dark hallways. Jason, just a routine night shift, nothing to worry about. As he walks, strange noises echo through the corridors. The sound of footsteps follows him, but every time he turns, there's nothing there. Jason enters a room filled with old medical equipment. Suddenly, a flickering light illuminates a patient bed, revealing a ghostly figure lying on it. Jason, who's there? The figure vanishes, leaving Jason trembling in fear. He tries to convince himself that it's his imagination, but the feeling of being watched is overwhelming. Jason descends into the dark basement. The air feels heavy, and the temperature drops. He hears a faint whisper, calling his name. Jason's heart races as he follows the voice. He reaches a locked room and hears a faint cry for help. Cries for help! Help me! Please! He tries to unlock the door but fails. Panic sets in as he realizes he's not alone. Jason races down the corridor trying to find an exit. The walls seem to close in around him, and the hospital appears never-ending. Suddenly a shadowy figure stands before him. It's a nurse in old-fashioned attire, her face pale and eyes hollow. Jason, who? Who are you, nurse? Help me, please. The nurse extends a cold hand towards Jason, but before he can react, she vanishes into thin air. Jason finds himself in an operating room. Surgical tools hang ominously on the walls. A gurney stands in the center of the room. On the gurney lies the lifeless body of a woman. Jason gasps, recognizing her as the nurse from before. Suddenly, the woman's eyes snap open, now a lifeless black. She levitates off the gurney, her presence terrifying. You should have left. Now it's too late. Jason's flashlight flickers, and the room plunges into darkness. The next morning, police officers discover Jason's lifeless body in the hospital's basement. Officer, shaking his head. Another night shift worker. We warned them about this place. As they cover his body, an unsettling feeling lingers in the air. The hospital's secrets will forever haunt those who dare to venture inside, especially during the night shift. Emma, early 30s, curious and skeptical, moves into an old Victorian house, hoping for a fresh start after a difficult year. As she settles in, she discovers a dusty music box on a forgotten shelf. Emma, smiling. This is a lovely find. She winds up the music box and a haunting melody fills the room. Mesmerized by the tune, Emma feels a strange presence in the house. Later that night, Emma tries to sleep, but the music box's melody echoes in her mind. She hears faint whispers and giggles, yet no one is there. Emma, nervously, just my imagination. It has to be. She places the music box outside the room and tries to ignore the eerie feeling. The next day, Emma hears the music box playing from the kitchen. Confused, she investigates and finds the box sitting on the counter playing the haunting melody once again. Emma, worried. How is it still playing? She shrugs off the unease, assuming she must have left it wound up. As Emma relaxes in the living room, the music box begins playing on its own. The melody grows louder, and Emma's anxiety intensifies. Emma, startled. What's going on? She tries to turn off the music box, but it won't stop. The room fills with whispers, and shadows dance along the walls, Unable to escape the relentless melody, Emma moves the music box to her bedroom. The room feels colder, and the whispers grow louder. Emma, frightened. Who's there? Show yourself! Suddenly, a ghostly figure appears before her, a young girl in a tattered dress. The girl hums the haunting melody, her eyes filled with sadness. Ghostly girl, whispers, help me, I'm trapped. Emma's heart races as she realizes the music box is haunted by the spirit of the girl, Emma, softly. How can I help you? Ghostly girl, teary-eyed. Find my locket. It's hidden in the attic. Emma reluctantly agrees to help the ghostly girl. In the attic, Emma finds a dusty locket glowing with an ethereal light. She retrieves it and returns to her bedroom. Emma, presenting the locket. Here it is, ghostly girl. Thank you. You've set me free. The ghostly girl's form dissipates and the music box finally stops playing. The house falls silent. Emma wakes up feeling a sense of peace. The haunting melody is gone, 
replaced by a newfound tranquility. Emma, smiling. Rest in peace, little one. As she holds the locket, she knows she has helped the girl find peace at last. From that day forward, the house feels warm and welcoming, thanks to the bond formed between Emma and the ghostly spirit. Lily browses through an old antique shop, intrigued by the vintage paintings and artifacts. Among the dusty frames, she notices a striking portrait of a woman, antique shop owner, smiling. Ah, that's a unique piece. Many claim it's cursed, you know. Lily is fascinated by the mysterious aura surrounding the portrait. Lily, interested. Cursed, tell me more, antique shop owner, whispering. Legend has it that the woman in the painting brings misfortune to whoever owns it, but I assure you it's merely a superstition. Lily, undeterred, decides to purchase the painting. Lily hangs the portrait on her living room wall. As she admires it, a chilling breeze fills the room, making her shiver. Lily, nervously, must be my imagination. Strange occurrences start happening around the apartment. Objects move on their own, and eerie whispers fill the air. Lily begins to feel uneasy, wondering if the legend about the cursed portrait holds any truth. Lily is cooking dinner when she hears the sound of footsteps behind her. She turns, but no one is there. Lily, apprehensive. Hello? No response. She brushes it off as her imagination. Lily wakes up in the middle of the night to the sound of crying coming from the living room. She cautiously walks towards the portrait. Help me. Set me free. Startled, Lily looks at the portrait, and to her horror, the woman in the painting moves, her eyes filled with anguish. Lily, frightened. This can't be happening. She tries to remove the portrait from the wall, but it won't budge. Lily seeks help from a paranormal investigator, James, 40s, skeptical yet open-minded. James, skeptical. See Erst painting. Let's see what we have here. As James examines the portrait, he senses an unusual energy emanating from it. James, gravely. This painting is indeed harboring something beyond our understanding. Together, they research the history of the portrait and discover that it belonged to a woman who suffered a tragic fate in the past. James, explaining. The woman in the painting was wronged, and her spirit seeks justice. Lily realizes that the only way to free the woman's spirit is to uncover the truth behind her tragedy. Lily and James dig through old records and newspapers, finally uncovering the woman's tragic story. Lily, determined, we need to right the wrongs of the past. With the newfound knowledge, Lily and James perform a ritual to release the spirit from the cursed portrait. Ghostly woman, tearful, thank you, I can finally rest in peace. A group of thrill-seekers, including Chris Adventurous and Daring, venture into an old abandoned asylum known for its dark history. Chris, grinning, this place is going to give us the chills. The group explores the eerie hallways, armed with flashlights and cameras. As they descend into the basement, strange noises echo around them. Amy, nervously, did you hear that, Chris teasing? It's just your imagination, Amy. In a dimly lit room, they find old patient files and disturbing drawings on the walls. Jason, this place gives me the creeps. Amy, serious. I read about a patient who vanished mysteriously from this room. As they continue exploring, they find a locked door covered in strange symbols. Lisa, let's find out what's behind this door. Using a key they found, they unlock the door and enter cautiously. The group finds themselves in a wing of the asylum that was rumored to be off limits due to paranormal activities. Chris, excited. This is where the real adventure begins. They encounter chilling cold spots and hear disembodied voices. In a hidden chamber, they discover disturbing tools used for experiments on patients. Amy, frightened. This place is cursed. Suddenly the room goes pitch dark and they hear heavy footsteps approaching. Chris, whispering. Did you hear that? As they shine their flashlights, they see shadowy figures moving in the darkness. Lisa, panicking. We need to get out of here. They rush towards the exit, but the door slams shut, trapping them inside. Jason, trying to open the door. It won't budge. The atmosphere becomes suffocating as the air turns icy cold. They hear haunting cries and see apparitions of tormented souls. Chris, trying to stay calm. We need to find a way out. Desperate to escape, they navigate the maze-like basement facing unexplained phenomena. In a hidden room, they find an ancient book of rituals. Lisa, determined, this book might hold the key to our escape. 
Amy, skeptical. Are you sure we should mess with it? Chris, resolute. We have no choice. They perform the ritual in hopes of breaking the curse. As they complete the ritual, the door creaks open, granting them an escape. Chris relieved. Let's get out of here. They run out of the asylum, leaving behind the horrors they encountered. Chris, panting. We made it out alive. Amy, serious. This place is not to be trifled with. As they leave the abandoned asylum, they know they have witnessed something beyond explanation, an experience that will stay with them forever.